Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. It's Victober, of course, and we are all reading Victorian literature. And a couple of weeks ago, I think it was before Victober, I saw a video done by Eric over at the Lonesome Reader um, posing the question, which Bronte sister are you? If you haven't seen the video, I will leave a link down below. Please go watch it and check it out. Um, and um, you also find in the show notes of this video a couple of links to polls, you know, where you can answer questions to see which Bronte sister you are. I think it was, it was a fabulous video. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about my experience with the Bronte sisters and um, focusing mainly on Wuthering Heights, which I read recently uh, together with Sean over at Sean the Book Maniac. Leave a link to his channel, of course, down below, but you are all subscribed to him anyway. So if I'm, uh, I mean, I'd, I haven't read all of the uh, Bronte sisters' work, but if I had to rank what I read recently, most of which was a reread in a sense that I read uh, the books when I was young, so 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or even longer ago, I don't want to talk about that, um, in German. So it was the first time I encountered the Bronte sisters' books in English. And ranking them, um, I would say my least favorite of the ones I read is Anne Bronte's debut, uh, Agnes Grey. Um, I really didn't think it was a very good book. It's about um, Agnes Grey, who has to earn a living after her f the father squanders the money, and she works as a as a nanny uh, for rich families to care for the children, and she is treated poorly. Um, it's very autobiographical, from what I understand. The own experience of Anne working um, as a as a nanny, uh, but. Agnes Grey as a character is so self-involved, so self-congratulatory that I, I, I thought it was, it was not good. Um, coming in then at, you know, from the bottom up at number two um, is Jane Eyre. I'm not a Jane Eyre person at all. I think the relationship between Jane and Miss Rochester is dubious to say the least. I personally feel that Rochester is a complete dickhead um, for the, the fact how he treats his wife. I mean, his wife is mentally ill, but still locking up mentally ill persons, uh, a mentally ill person in the attic um, and feeling good about that. And then, you know, uh, wanting to marry Jane, even though he is already married. And the way their relationship is portrayed, the way they talk to each other, I mean... I, I don't see any loving relationship between the two. So I, I didn't I didn't very much care for Jane Eyre either. Um, number three, again, from the bottom up, uh, is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall uh, and Bronte's second book, which I thought was a good book. I really enjoyed the story of Helen, um, who is a, a young mother, supposedly a widow, coming to live at Wildfell Hall. Uh, but it turns out we learn through her diaries mainly, a big portion of the book is um, uh, her diaries, in which she tells us about her very unhappy marriage and her abusive husband and how she tries um, to get out of that marriage. I really uh, appreciated this sort of almost feminist point of view, uh, the, the female perspective uh, given to us through these diaries, I think was quite uh, unconventional, and I, I definitely enjoyed it. But in the end, I don't even have to take one of the polls that Eric uh, suggested. I'm Team Emily. Wuthering Heights is certainly my absolute favorite, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, book in particular, and it's more lengthy, you know, I'm babbling, so it's probably going to be very lengthy. And also in response to uh, a review I, I watched uh, recently, I think last week, um, posted by Brian over at Bookish, um, and it, it's a, a fabulous video. If you haven't seen it, please go watch and subscribe to his channel. Um, and I, I don't think I, I give away spoilers because he's, I think he says that right up front that he didn't 
he doesn't like the book. So I thought, I because I love it, uh, this is also a good opportunity to film a response. So, Wuthering Heights, very briefly, for those of you who might not have read it or forgotten about the plot, um, the book is set in 1801, and we encounter Mr. Lockwood, who is the new tenant at uh, Thrush Cross Grange, um, and the landlord is Heathcliff, who lives uh, further away um, in a moorland farmhouse called Wuthering Heights. Um, but the main portion of the book is then told to Mr. Lockwood while he is recovering from um, an illness by the long-term uh, uh, servant uh, um, uh, Nellie Ellen Nellie Dean. She tells Lockwood the story of Heathcliff and the two family, the Earnshaws and the Lintons, from the 1760s until 1801. And so we learn that um, Heathcliff was a foundling uh, who was brought by um, Mr. Earnshaw, found him on, in the streets in Edinburgh. He brought him to his family um, uh, living in, in, uh, it, it, at Wuthering Heights. There are two children already, Catherine and Hindley, and Catherine and Heathcliff become friends, but Hindley tre treats his new brother uh, very, very poorly. He's bullying him um, all the way. Then Catherine and Heathcliff sort of falls, fall in love. Um, we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but Catherine decides um, instead to marry Edgar Linton. The Lintons live uh, at a Thrush Cross Grange, and they are... Uh, um, gentry family. So, you know, Edgar is the opposite of Heathcliff. Heathcliff is wild and uneducated. Um, he is always uh, 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 talked about as a gypsy, you know, dark-skinned gypsy. We won't go into the not politically correct way uh, that uh, <laughs> Emily Bronte described it. It's Victorian literature. Anyway, so Catherine marries Edgar, uh, Heathcliff uh, goes away, uh, comes back as a rich man and takes revenge. You know, the, 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 he ends up marrying um, Isabel, who is Edgar's sister, treats her poorly. She dies after giving birth. So it's, it's you know, multi-generational, uh, a multi-generational mess. And then the book ends with the generation of the children. So we have young Kathy, who is the daughter of Edgar and Catherine. Uh, we have Linton, who is the son um, of Heathcliff and Isabella. And we have Harriton, who is the son of Hindley and his wife Frances, who also died. There are a lot of people who die in the book. Anyway, so the first thing I wanted I want to say is, um, for me, this book is not about is not a love story, uh, even though the relationship between uh, Catherine Earnshaw and Heathcliff is at the center of the book and um, informs everything that happens later on. Um, I think the what I love about the book, first of all, is the writing. Uh, I think it's 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 extremely well written. The atmosphere of these two houses, Wuthering Heights, in this, you know, rough, gritty moorland setting, and then the the sort of very conventional, very uh, um, yeah, educated household uh, at uh, Thrush Cross Grange with the Lintons. These two opposites are for me one of the core things of the book. The, the the wild towards the convention and Catherine uh, who is a wild person at her core but is not able to really live it uh, and one of the the I think the uh, the the most important scenes is when when uh, Catherine talks to Nellie about herself and about her personality and says Heathcliff is me. He is more me than I am. But she decides to go 
for the convention. So she marries Edgar, who is a very nice man, but she is not passionately in love with him. But he gives her security and he gives her the the context of you know the the well educated conventional life. So that theme I thought was really um, uh, described well, or or um, you know evolved did evolve really well also the metaphor these two houses that sort of signify these two ways of being uh, wh whether it's wild or rather um, submit yourself you know to convention succumb to convention I, I thought that that was brilliant and very modern in a way um, the language also was quite modern I thought for uh, I mean a Victorian novel um, talking about uh, sluts uh, I thought was pretty wild especially from a female writer I mean Emily Bronte published a book under a pseudonym but still so I thought that that was really interesting, a very modern theme. But what I um, um, liked most about the book is another quite modern theme, and that is the, the way abuse sort of perpetuates itself through generations. Because Heathcliff, um, even though he is, quote-unquote, a wild boy, uh, would have probably become a quite different man if he hadn't encountered serious bullying and abuse as a child uh, from his uh, brother Hindley uh, but also you know from from the people uh, other people around him and he sort of perpetuates that kind of abuse towards his own um, uh, children and towards his wife Isabella um, and only you know, the next generation, when we have young Kathy, um, uh, she can she can break free um, in the end from this abusive pattern. Because if you look at um, uh, the son of uh, Heathcliff and Isabella Linton, uh, he is so afraid of his father, uh, he becomes a cruel person himself as a way of reacting to his own cruel environment. And Harriton, um, the son of Francis and, and Hindley, um, he is just, you know, treated poorly as well. So th this idea that um, uh, a traumatized childhood perpetuate, perpetuates itself through the generations, I thought was really brilliantly done. And for me, it was a, it's a very modern story. Um, and as, as I said before, I also liked the, the 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 imagery, the metaphors. There are a lot of locked houses and locked rooms. You know, people trying to find entry into a house, um, find their place in the world. Um, so one of the uh, the criticisms, uh, and I can under I can totally understand that Brian in that video that I uh, talked about that I referenced earlier says, well. You know, it's sort of repetitive, and then we have Heathcliff and Catherine, and then it we have Kathy and Linton and Harriton, and it all repeats itself. And yes, I can see that, but that was for me uh, on purpose because of the the perpetuating abuse and how it um, uh, how it influences the next uh, generation. So I I liked that liked I mean I I thought that repetition was done uh, for a purpose and it didn't bore me at all. Um, the other thing that I I thought was really well done is the way that that Heathcliff is portrayed and um, you know he is a bad man, but there's also this this the way that you, at least I, I could see why he would become the person that he ended up being. You know, his his uh, never-ending urge to take revenge. And at the same time, um, he 
has this the he treats people just as badly as he has been treated himself so all these kind of topics i thought were really interesting and well done uh and then the little bit of a gothic element with uh catherine earnshaw's ghost uh, coming you know i i i i liked it it was not um the main thing that i thought made the book good but I, I still like that and and the ending uh, uh, in, in this hopeful ending that there is a possibility of breaking free from an abusive pattern I thought was well done without being you know too cheesy of course the book is not perfect um, I mean first of all the the biggest quote-unquote flaw is of course that like I said most of the book is told to Lockwood by Nellie and it's like 300 pages in which she uh, uh, recounts dialogue that she encountered 20 years ago I mean in a modern book we probably would you know have an eye roll or two about a writer doing that but I think that is a Victorian convention in order to to frame a story that I'm willing you know to just go with so anyway I I love the book uh, but I'm also interested in what you think which Bronte sister you are if you have read any of the books that I mentioned which one is your favorite and why uh, and more in particular of course I'm interested in what you think about Wuthering Heights Anyway, that was my, as I said before, lengthy discussion of the Brontes and Wuthering Heights in particular. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Looking forward, as always, to your comments, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye-bye.